So this video today goes out to Charlie McGowan, Charles C Money, C Dog. Not sure what you go by, but thank you so much for your contribution. We'll be covering a topic that Charles requested, which is how to sketch and draw rims and wheels. And we're gonna use Procreate 5 for that because I wanna show you some tips and tricks that'll help you speed up your workflow a bit. If you don't have an iPad Pro, however, that is totally fine. You can grab whatever you have. I always put the materials below in the video description so you have a few ideas of what to get and it also helps support the channel here. So with that, let's get started. So I've got my iPad Pro here and let's just unlock. And I'm using last year's iPad. I know Apple just announced a new set of iPad Pros or iPads Pro um, that they'll be releasing, but I am using my existing iPad Pro. Now, I went ahead and sketched something up here. So let's say you did sketch up a vehicle and you wanna draw some rims and put rims on this car. Well, part of the process is really just understanding the geometry of a rim. Now, in the simplest way, possible I can start by just drawing a box something like this now the important thing is we want to make sure that this face is more or less representative of a square so once we have our box here I'm gonna go ahead and draw the back plane as well and change the color the reason I'm drawing this box is I'm trying to approximate generally speaking the shape of a wheel right so if you look at a wheel You've got a circle. I can draw a square around that circle. I can divide that circle into eight parts, for example, and suss out some relationships. Also, as I rotate this box or wheel in perspective, I'm going to get, or rather, if I look at it from the end view, my apologies, you're gonna get something like this, okay? Your wheel, maybe a little bit of the rim showing, and your axle going in this direction. So what I'm after really is this distance being translated into this dimension here. I'll represent that by X. And I want this width translated and represented here. We'll call that Y. So now that I have my X and Y, let's go ahead and make a new layer here. I'm gonna crank the opacity down and just draw over this. But now that I have these two planes, I can essentially draw two circles in these squares, okay? So square one and square two back here. Keep it nice and loose. All right, so I have these two squares that are pushed apart at a certain dif distance. Now, like I said, you can divide these squares by the diagonals and height like so and if we look at our initial circle here that we drew in our box you'll notice a few things relationship wise so about a third of the way in on this diagonal if i were to map this out it's about a third of the way in i notice that the circle intersects assuming i drew this correctly this would be tangent tangent so we have four tangents and four thirds so on our perspective drawing, I would, I'm gonna crank the opacity down again. I would estimate or guesstimate about a third of the way in on these diagonals. And then I would be able to draw an ellipse such that it's tangent at these four, four points. Okay, we're gonna have some, some touching there. And about a third of the way in, I was a little bit off on this line, but about a third of the way in, I have um, an intersection on these diagonals. Okay, so we would do the same thing back here. And if you do this enough and you have enough practice, you can just go for it. But really you're gonna end up with two ellipses, something like that, okay? All right, I'm gonna switch colors here to kind of show you what else is happening. Now, rims, wheels, they're not perfect cylinders that have no transitions, right? So if I look at a wheel in this direction, again, at the front of the vehicle, you'll notice that the wheel has more of a shape like this. You can go out, look at your car. If you have a car, um, you'll see what I mean. And the rims tend to poke out just a little bit from that tire. If you've ever tried to pull into a parking lot 
maybe you've had the experience where your rim hits the curb and it's really jarring and upsetting. That's because the rim sticks out a little bit from the wheel, the tire itself rather. And on this surface, you'd have your tire tread and so forth, okay? Something like that. Now, let me actually cut and paste this on a new layer so we still have it, but it's not there. In Procreate, if you take your three fingers and swipe down, you have this menu, contextual menu that shows up and you could cut and paste, copy and paste and so forth. I'm gonna cut and paste, which removes it from the current layer, puts it on a new layer so I can turn that off now. So going back to my main sketch, if I were looking at this profile, what I would wanna do is then have an offset, okay? So to get this kind of transition when I'm sketching, this circle that is offset from our main line here needs to be smaller, okay? So to make it smaller and offset this, I'm going to, looks like I made another mistake there. So let's see, cut and paste and we'll merge these two layers down. All right, great. So let's turn this off and on a new layer, let's extend out these lines like so. And we're basically gonna offset this square. So offset by drawing out just a little bit. Offset meaning this distance. I'm pushing out the side. I am exaggerating it for this wheel just to show you guys the difference here and what I'm trying to do. Okay, but not only is it offset, it's also smaller. So to get a smaller square, and this might get a little messy, but to get a smaller square, what I need to do is draw an X in the middle decide what size my new ellipse is gonna be. And then once I mark those points on my diagonals, I can follow my system of perspective. And now I have an inset square that is offset as well. Okay, and you'll wanna follow those perspective lines as you do this. Now let's throw the opacity down, turn it down here on this layer. And again, this is not how I typically draw. I'm just trying to show you how I think through these things. But then I would have an ellipse like so. And you can kind of see what's happening here. Like I said, this is a bit exaggerated, but the idea is to offset your surfaces. So now I have this profile. If I were to draw, for example, a contour line on these surfaces, it may look something like this. Now that's not to say this is an incorrect wheel fundamentally. It's just that for a normal car, you probably wouldn't see this much. Perhaps if there was a softer transition here, we could use this to be representative of something like a Formula One racing wheel. But for a normal automobile, we won't do that. So now that we've kind of got the principle, I'm gonna go ahead and offset this ellipse, turn off these layers, and I can now offset this ellipse and we're just gonna freehand this. And so what I like to do is draw an ellipse that is slightly offset, something like that. And just like so with a couple angled lines and going back, we now have the beginnings of our wheel shape. Now with the wheel profile, okay, I mentioned on the outside we have kind of this this bulging transition at the top. What we need to do, however, is think about the inside. So by the inside, I mean, you know, what does this rim look like on the inside, okay? What is the cross section of the rim? Now, just to simplify, what I like to do is think of the inside of the rim, something like this kind of funky elongated hourglass or I shape, like a capital letter I. And so as I do this, the spokes on my wheel, I kind of curve in, and this is a cross-sectional view, okay? So I kind of curve those in toward this plane. So by plane, I mean, if I were to draw another ellipse in here, I would then follow that up by drawing the spokes that kind of arc toward this circular shape that is now inset, all right? As far as this line goes, I tend to show just a couple bumps depending on how much that inset 
happens because you're not really going to see everything that's happening. And so from here, you can kind of add some three dimensionality just with a few lines. So another ellipse offset kind of to kind of uh, frame in where our voids between the spokes are going to be. I find that that works really well. And then just adding some contrast, some dark values in between the spokes and offset. And we have kind of a generic wheel shape. So that's, that's a bit of the mechanics of what I like to do. I want to show you one more thing here. And that is on the tire itself. So on the tire itself, one thing I like to do is kind of introduce a little bit of a jogged line on the tire that follows this ellipse. So I'll do that one more time so you guys can see. Slight, and I'm just following my underlay here. I jog, back up, follow the underlay, jog, back up, follow the underlay, kind of in this angled, angled manner, okay? All the way around. And as I shade this in, hopefully you'll see here, it's actually a really nice blue, almost like an indigo blue Prismacolor pencil. I am using my new brush pack. You can check that out soon, we'll be launching. But just a couple lines like that, and that helps me avoid sketching in real tread lines. Now, if you really wanted to, you could take the effort, go online, find a picture, and use that as reference, but I find that this is enough to kind of explain that this is a wheel. Visually, at a glance, it's a great symbol to communicate wheel. Well, what if I have a car sketch? Actually, I think it's the same file here. Yep, it's the same file. What if we have a car sketch? I'm gonna go ahead and group these together. Let's hide these. Car sketch, something like this. And we want to design and place a wheel here. Okay, now I've, I've roughed this out to save some time, but I want to put a wheel, or rim rather, on these wheels that I've sketched in, okay? Here's my axle lines, like so, and I wanna put a wheel in. Now, a couple of things I need to decide on, you know, number of spokes, okay? And I need to define, or decide rather, on whatever details I wanna have on this, okay? Do the, does the, does the spoke terminate in some sort of Y shape? Is, is there going to be some sort of surface transition on these? Maybe a void, something like that. Okay. So I want to be thinking about those details. Now, what I can do in Procreate is in my gallery, what I'm going to do here, actually, let's see. In my gallery, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to pick this square template. Let's go tap the wrench. And once the wrench is activated, you have these menus and options. On canvas, you want to select drawing guide, flip this toggle. And all of a sudden you'll see there's a grid on the screen or you should see there's a grid on the screen. Okay, my overhead camera is blowing it out a little bit. But in any case, you'll see this grid. Now you wanna tap edit drawing guide. And this is gonna give you some options. Like I can change the color of the drawing guide. Um, I can change the thickness of that drawing guide, the opacity, and so forth. You can mess with those settings to your heart's content and make that work. Now, there are four options at the bottom. I have 2D grid, isometric, perspective grid, and symmetry. I'm gonna tap on symmetry. And not only that, because if I have just symmetry on, it's gonna allow me to mirror my drawing left to right across from that drawing guide. But I wanna tap options and go to radial symmetry and also select rotational symmetry and hit done at the top here. Actually, I changed my grid color. Okay, hit done. Now I have these quadrants. It's divided into eight. I'm not actually sure if I can change the number here. Let's see, radial. Nope, I can't change the number of divisions, but these eight divisions should be enough for me to work with my drawing. And what I want to do is try and draw a circle, okay? And so I'm just going to lightly sketch this in, like so, and then offset and draw another line. Now you'll notice that whatever I draw in one quadrant is carried throughout the whole thing, okay? 
So if I wanted to put a squiggle here, you see that squiggle is everywhere, okay? So at this point, I can start by drawing my spokes like so. And let's say I wanna do something interesting here with the rim. I can draw into another quadrant, for example, like so. And now I have this crazy, crazy rim design, okay? Pretty nuts. So you can, you can really have fun with this, play with it, see what you come up with, see what works for your vehicle concept, okay? And just roll with it. And this is something I don't typically spend a ton of time on. So you'll have to forgive me in previous drawings if I haven't covered this topic, but um, definitely something you can pay attention to, work at, and it'll help your drawings out if you wanna give your ideas a little bit of presence. Okay, so there you can see, I've quickly created an interesting rim design. If I wanna do another one, I could duplicate this layer and erase what's inside or parts if I want to. Maybe I don't like, let's see, I'm gonna turn off this layer, but maybe I don't like a part of this, right? I can erase what I don't need, maybe keep the middle, and then start to come up with another design, like so. And this way, I quickly now have a new rim design, okay? Pretty handy and pretty easy as well. So if you wanna do something more complicated visually, this is a great way to execute on your design idea such that you can just quickly have a nice rim design or idea. You can even do things like applying some marker and tone. Now you'll notice that I am working in black and white and I'll explain to you why I'm doing that. I'm actually gonna turn this rim design into a brush and we are going to use this brush to finish out our car sketch. So I'll even fill in these voids with my marker brush here and go ahead and tone this out, make it a little darker toward the middle and so forth just like so. And when you're ready, you can turn off, you can turn off the drawing guide for the layer. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to do, let's see, I'm going to turn off the drawing assist. There we go. So to do that, you tap on the layer. There's a little thing that says drawing assist. I can engage that or turn it off. I've now turned it off because what I want to do is shade this wheel where it needs to be shaded. So on the top, if that goes in a little bit, for example, or on the bottom here, if these need to be more in shadow. And I really do enjoy these brushes I've been working on. They are fun. They have that real natural look and feel to them. So I'm excited to share those with you guys, hopefully soon. And I wanna hear what you think as well. But back to the wheel, I now have this design. So on this layer, I'm gonna tap this layer, hit select. And, well, actually, I'm gonna tap the layer now and hit copy. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm working in a square file already. Okay, let's backtrack. I'm going to make the background of the layer black. Okay, now tap on layer one and hit invert. And now I have this white on black version of the wheel. So what I wanna do now is hit share. And I'm gonna share this as a JPEG. I'm gonna scroll up hit save to files and on my iPad is the option selected. I'm gonna hit procreate and hit save. I added something there already, so I'm just gonna hit replace. And now let's go back to the car drawing. We're gonna make a brush that we can use in our car drawing. So turn this layer off, make a new layer. Under brushes, I have this new folder called specialty. I'm gonna hit new or hit that plus sign, hit new brush. And under shape, we have this circle, and this is the brush studio and procreate. I will do a video in the future, a little, a little bit on the brush studio and what that's all about. But for now, just hit shape. Under shape source, we want to hit edit, import, import a file. And I'm already in my procreate folder here. 
So tapping on that, I can now deselect, hit done, okay? And now I have the ability to paint with this brush. Okay, so if I tap once and it's really small, you won't be able to see the wheel. You might be able to see some of the detail on this, but there's a couple of things we need to change. So under properties, we wanna set the maximum size. And as I, as I slide the slider, you'll notice that the wheel looks a lot bigger. So let's clear the drawing pad. And if I tap once, you'll see there's the wheel. Like so you can get a better sense of the size. So I'm gonna make a maximum size for the brush, just something nice and big, like so. And then I want to also take the minimum opacity for the brush all the way up. Under Apple Pencil, there's a setting. If you're using the Apple Pencil, it says opacity, control by pressure, maximum control. I'm gonna swipe that all the way down because I wanna just be able to tap and get one of those wheel uh, shapes put in. Okay, hit done. Now if I change my color to black and tap on the screen, I now have the ability to essentially stamp this wheel on my sketch. Pretty cool. So here, let's adjust the size of this wheel down. And unfortunately, Procreate does not give you a preview of the size of the wheel. But on this new layer, I'm just going to tap once and now hit the arrow and I can transform this. Just make sure it's on free form. And now I can just scale and pull these handles like so. And then just a little bit of warp on the inside of the wheel. You kind of have to play with it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna make a couple surgical selections on this wheel just to help things read a little bit better because it feels a little bit off. Hit transform, back to warp, and now we're gonna play with this a little bit until we get something we want. All right, let's go back to this step. Hit transform or warp, freeform, we'll scale it, get it close, like so, deselect, and back to transform, oops. Let's make a selection first. I'm just gonna select the inside portion. What I'm trying to do is make sure this feels like it's actually three-dimensional. So now that I have that inside portion selected, I go to warp, and now I should be able to push that portion, just that portion in. We can clean up as needed, but it's a good way to save a bunch of time. So once you've done that once, you can actually duplicate this layer, and now I can drag, oops, let's make sure that's on uniform but I can move this wheel to the back of my drawing and now with it set to free form, just scale and place this wheel where it needs to be placed. Okay, so that's a quick way to get wheels in place if you are working with a car drawing. And of course, with my brushes or your brushes of choice, you'll be able to finish this out, the sketch rather, out. And now we have now we have a nice sketch concept that we can kind of finish out with maybe just a little bit of tone here. Okay. A little bit of toning happening. Like so with my gray marker brush and some pressure opacity control as well. Just like that. All right, so that's a quick way, quick way to make some wheel templates that you can use in your sketch to make them seem just a bit more finished and rounded out. And hopefully that answers some questions that you may have had about how I draw wheels or ways to improve your workflow and come up with a more presentable sketch. Well, thanks for watching guys. And if you've made it this far, much love, much appreciated. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts and come say hi on the socials. I am at sketchaday.com. Definitely hit up sketchaday.com slash newsletter where you'll be able to sign up for my super sketch tip guide. And every Friday 
9 a.m. Pacific. I am live here on YouTube sharing and hanging out with you guys. And I love your suggestions. So be sure to get those in before. Join the Discord. Come hang out. We're going to have a great time. Well, that's it for today. And we'll see you next time right here on Sketch Day.